Welcome to the Dime Out channel. I think this may be the last video of 2020. What a year. I hope you're all okay and uh, are in a positive mind to uh, move forward in life and uh, let's get back on track. Um, right, today is, uh, by the way, I've caught a cold. That's why I'm all like scarfed up. Got the hat on. <clears throat> my voice might sound different. I'm going to be coughing and spluttering, probably sneezing occasionally, stopping to blow my nose and all that. But uh, it's unusual. I don't usually get ill. Uh, when I do catch a bit of a cold like this, like this one got me, I usually fight them off, but um, this one got me. But I change the language, I, I just tell myself I don't get ill, I'm not that kind of person. And I usually get better really quickly, but unfortunately it got me this time. Um, it's cold, right? It's one degree when I leave the house on my motorbike. And my job, yeah, I work mornings in the supermarket, in the freezer section. You know when you go to the freezer section in a supermarket and you're like, let's get out of here, quick. Yeah, I work there five hours every day. And then when I'm not there stacking cold things on shelves in the cold area, I'm out back inside a giant fridge, stacking things up on big carts, like really heavy things. So it was like proper physical work in really freezing conditions nonstop. And then I ride home in the cold on a motorbike. So that's probably why I got ill this time. Uh, anyway, man flu, men are always complaining, yeah. Um, right, today's a short video. I wanna show, I just sold this ring. I, I have to size it. So I've done the sizing and I just wanna use string to polish out a little section on it. So I thought I may as well just do a little video showing string polishing because it comes in really useful sometimes. <clears throat> right, I'll take my mask off <clears throat> so my voice is clearer. Uh, yeah, just this little leaf ring I made recently. I sold it. Uh, in there, I want to polish like in, in that section and you can get it with little bristle brushes, but string is nice because it wraps right around a curve and you can you can get places that even a bristle brush doesn't get that well although i do always back up the polishing with a bristle brush because uh it does polish things out it does get them kind of polished but it doesn't bring them up to really bright shine so where possible i will get bristle brushes in there as well all right this is polishing string yeah from a jewelry tool supplier in london but it's not special string it's just string like if you've got any kind of stringy string made of string it'll work I would avoid kind of plasticky nylon-y stuff or anything like kind of hessian. It's too frays too much. Uh, it's got to be stringy string. I don't know what you call it. It's made of sort of cotton or proper fiber. I don't know. String. <laughs> any, any string will do. This is really thin. Uh, I actually think a thicker string would be better. Uh, anyway, I, I'm sort of reluctant to advise doing this at your bench, but at the same time, I've only ever done it at my bench. It's never caused a problem, but using polish and stuff uh, doesn't mix well if you've got little bits of solder if you've got like polished dust going on them it might that might not flow if you pick up that bit of solder and then try and use it so keep keep it keep all the dust and stuff away from your solders if possible but at the same time I say I've been doing this I've always I've only ever done it at my bench and it's never actually caused me a problem right anyway so uh, an arm's length maybe a bit more yeah maybe a bit more an arm and a half let's call it Cut it off. If it's the first of my videos you've clicked on, welcome to the Diamond Mount channel. And if you're wondering what I look like. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, fold it in half. Fold it in half again, so that's quarters. And then once more. And you got a bit about that long, yeah, that was like an arm. I just did that, <laughs> plus a bit, no real maths to it. And then the, the ends that's all looped around, I just wrap it around and tie a knot in it basically, right at the end. This is harder than usual. Everything's harder than usual when you've got a cold, yeah. And if you make jewelry when, you <clears throat> if you make jewelry when you've got a cold, uh, you may find the next day, like you come to work or later, the next day or whenever, a few days later when you're better, if you pick up that same job, it will look terrible. You're like, everything was kind of wonky and off. Like you lose your ability to see, line things up accurately when you've caught a cold. And working on things that you find difficult, like at the top level of your skill, really hard. Like it knocks your skill level down a little bit when you're a bit ill. So be careful when you're actually working on something expensive or on customers pieces and stuff. That's been my experience anyway, over the years. Right, so yeah, I've just tied a little knot, you know, just the simple knot, like you might do in a dressing gown. I don't know what that knot's called. Uh, yeah, so now I've got that. 
this wire I've got in my bench. Um, I did talk about this in one of my Golden Nuggets videos. I was, the, ideally, it comes out of the bench, then goes down and across, then up and then in the bench. This bit of wire is all I had. It wasn't long enough to do that. Plus, to be honest, I kind of forgot. Um, uh, so yeah, I just, I just banged it in there. And the problem with it just being in like that, when you've got tweezers on there, it sticks up too high. So when I'm mucking about with stones and stuff on there, my elbow is always hitting that and they get in the way. So I always take them off. And uh, as soon as I find a decent bit of wire, I will be remaking that. And you can use coat hanger wire, but it's a bit bendy. Like they do kind of flex a bit. I want something strong that I can still bend. So with this bit of string, I just uh, tie it to that. Try and keep the length as much as possible. That knot on the end stops it sticking through, so you haven't got to go crazy with this any highly technical knot on there, but that's just tied on there, yeah? And then this end, I like to snip off all the loops. So that's just a, that's just a load of loose bits of string now. So I'm gonna make two of those. Um, yeah, you've got two now, yeah? So one for each grade of polish. Don't mix your polishes on them, it doesn't really work. Uh, right, so yeah, this one, just rub it on there. Try and get it all around. Mix up the strings a bit. What I do is don't do the whole thing. I kind of do like most of it, but leave a little bit off. I find that helps getting a, a polish if you've got a clean bit. Yeah, and then with your string, sometimes like that whole bunch of string is too big for what you're trying to get it through. So you can go down to like, even like two, I've done plenty of times, get two. Um, as you use them, they get a bit frayed. One little trick is to get like a point on that. It's just, just get it in your mouth and, and lick it. And all the little frayed, little frayed bits of string will um, go to a point and then you can carefully hook it through. Like see if I, can, I think the more you can get in a space, the better, it's better for polishing. I'm just pushing that through. And where, like I mentioned before, sometimes it's preferable to a bristle brush. Where's my bristle brushes? Oh, I didn't get them out. Come on, there we go. <clears throat> so I'm like pushing, pushing that into there. You're only sort of hitting, this is straight, yeah? So you're only hitting where that touches. But string, you can bend it right round, so you can get a proper, proper polish all the way around a, a rounded piece. So then you just um, do this. Also, I tilt things, so I've got this kind of like, almost like an S shape going on. Do that on purpose. And then as soon as the polish comes off, put a bit more on. As the polish gets more ingrained into the string, it improves its performance. But keep the piece moving. Don't just go up and down, up and down in one spot because that will cut into the metal. So not just left, right. You can rotate it as you're going back to the forwards and doing this. Right, a bit more polish. Just keep it loaded up. The string goes all waxy and it actually just feels nice to the polish as well. Right, there's only silver, so I haven't got to really go to town on it. Doing this on platinum, you can be here all day. <laughs> uh, I like using string to polish stuff. It does actually, it's quite satisfying. It feels very old school. It feels very old fashioned, which is uh, more suiting to making jewelry, I feel. Right, uh, next one, a bit green on it. Technically, it should start to brighten up now with this one. But like I say, I do, they do polish, but not, they don't bring things up to a really nice shine, I reckon. So, uh, I like to go over what I can with bristle brushes as well. But even bristle brushes are, are a bit liney. When you loop the surface with 10 times loop, they're, they're quite scratchy themselves. I suppose you could have grades of softer and softer string bring up to a really nice polish. Right at the end, you'll have like some like ultra expensive handmade cashmere, <laughs> or just a polishing cloth. You can make string out of a polishing cloth and maybe do a nice job. Can you see? Is that coming up on camera? It's brightening up a little bit. 
Can you see, we're looking at these inner inner edges, yeah? Is that looking shiny at all on, on the camera? That's just string polishing. I'll probably hit in there as well. Just go around it. Underneath these leaves was matte anyway, so I do that with my paper disc, but all the shank, it's got to be polished. That's how the customer saw it when it was uh, on display. Um, yes, I will be sticking that in. Maybe even the, uh, something like, something like that. Pound shop one, no. Uh, but if that was a good quality one, you can see it in my pound shop video. Uh, it's sort of in there, that little corner, it's all useful. Uh, what else we got? Yes, I wanted to show you these on video before. I'm gonna do a Golden Nuggets special edition um, on polishing, because you know, I'm a diamond mounter first, but I'm a clean polisher second. A setter third, a uh, setter like 10th. Um, but yeah, all jewelry I've made over the years was polished by me, and all jewelry made by all the other people in that business I worked in London, all polished by me. I've done loads and loads of polishing, so I've learned a lot over the years, and it is a really acquired skill. I think it's more difficult than people imagine. I think most people commonly don't polish things enough. Like, you can get a really good shine on stuff, but you've got to polish it more than what I think people are used to. So anyway, I just wanted to mention these. This comes from a modeling shop. It's a little, basically a cocktail stick with sort of uh, cotton wool on the end. And these are actually useful for getting in this kind of thing. I just gently put a bit of polish on the end. Uh, I cut it a bit shorter. I put it in my, in my drill. And then you can brighten things up really nicely in here. Little hard to reach areas. They don't last forever, but they're super cheap and they come in packs of like a million. So yeah, I recommend these, but not a jewelry tool. It's a modeling tool. And uh, from what I've seen of modeling lately, uh, models people make are amazing like impress me way more than any jewelry i'm seeing being made like proper amazing what people do with their little models little model cars little model houses and stuff uh yeah crazy anyway um yeah i use this in this kind of thing helps you get little polished areas that might not have been possible before with other tools okay uh, that was it, just a short little video I wanted to show about string polishing. And then they can stay on your bench, like I'm putting all my tweezers back on. They will just stay there now, and then you saw next time, just go straight to them. Just a little zip, zip, zip. And uh, yeah, you get things, little areas polished that you couldn't do with another tool, so I recommend that. Um, yeah, so I think this is the last video for 2020, 2020. Um, yeah, so see you next year, 2021. Uh, let's, let's just forget about this year, let's move on. It was not good for a lot of people. So uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you are in a kind of at least positive kind of frame of mind and you have your sort of future planned out a little bit, but be careful. Remember what I said in my Bitcoin video about, uh, yeah, there's gonna be more financial trouble next year. It's like COVID-19 was the earthquake and now we've got the tsunami come in. Massive inflation, they've printed all this money, they've destroyed like the currencies of uh, different countries by over printing money. Crazy, there's a lot of trouble coming. So did you buy Bitcoin? I bet you didn't. Have you seen what it's done recently? It's gone up loads. And I said it was gonna hit 20,000 before the end of the year, and it has, it's smashed it. It's above 20 now. Um, it was like $14,000 when I made that video just a few weeks ago. Uh, so listen to Uncle Diamond Mauer about investments. I'll look after you. And uh, if you want another top tip, Lamborghini Diablos now, the old Diablos, are undervalued. You can still buy them for 150,000 uh, pounds. Buy a good one, look after it, like spend money, keeping its upkeep in top, tip top condition. You will sell it and make a hundred grand in like three years time. So another top tip for you there from Diamond Mounter, investor, idiot. Um, right, so yeah, let's finish the year on that little stupid note from me and see you next year. Let's move forward. Let's make some stuff next year. I'm looking forward to it. All right, bye.